we cannot exercise our faith beyond what we believe to be possible. We are awakening to that marvelous truth, that Christ is not in the heavens only, nor the atmosphere only, but Christ is in you. Jesus did not heal the sick in order to coax them to be Christians. He healed because it was his nature to heal. Fear of the devil is nonsense. Fear of demons is foolish. The spirit of God anointing the Christian heart makes the soul impregnable to the powers of darkness. In Christ we become God's sons, man's servants and the devil's masters. The secret of Christianity is in being. It is in being a possessor of the nature of Jesus Christ. When a Christian tries to live by reason he is moving out of God's country into the enemy's land. We belong in the miraculous and the supernatural realm. Beloved, it is not our long prayers but our belief in God that gets the answer. Science is the discovery of how God does things. Miracles are creative. Healing is the restoration of what has been. For the sake of a dying, suffering world count the cost, pay the price and set the captives free. The glory of God is as destructive of evil as it is creative of good. Take the words of Jesus and let them become the supreme court of the gospel to you. Beloved, if any unholiness exists in the nature, it is not there by the consent of the Spirit of God. If unholiness is in your life it is because your soul is giving consent to it, and you are retaining it. Let it go. Cast it out and let God have his way in your life. Men have said that the cross of Christ was not a heroic thing, but I want to tell you that the cross of Jesus Christ has put more heroism in the souls of men than any other event in human history. The ministry of Christianity is the ministry of the Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that inhabits the words, that speaks to the Spirit of another and reveals Christ in and through him. Christ is at once the spotless descent of God into man and the sinless ascent of man into God, and the Holy Spirit is the agent by whom this is accomplished. If you are having the right kind of spiritual fellowship, you will have power with God and there is no escaping it. When I saw for the first time by the word of God that sickness was not the will of God, everything in my nature rose up to defeat the will of the devil. Healing is not always obtained by saying a prayer. It is obtained by obeying God. I feel that very frequently prayers made a refuge to dodge the action of faith. Salvation is not just something God gives you that is going to bless you after you die, it is having the presence of the Lord now. The wonder is that Jesus purposed to make your heart and mind just as sweet and lovely and pure and holy as his own. It became easy for me to detach myself from the course of life so that while my hands and mind were engaged in the common affairs of every day, my spirit maintained its attitude of communion with God. The power of God, the Holy Ghost, is the spirit of dominion. It makes one a God. Do you know what prayer is? It is not begging God for this and that. The first thing we have to do is to get you beggars to quit begging until a little faith moves in your souls. There is a mighty lot of difference between saying prayers and praying. There is only one reality. That reality is God. The soul of man must contact God, and unless the spirit of man is truly joined to God, there is no such thing as real Christian manifestation. A man's life will be of the character of his thought. 
his outward life will be as the inner impulse is. The reason that people do not have a rich, beautiful faith is that their spirit is denied the privilege of communion and fellowship with the Father. It is almost a sadness to my soul that men should be astonished and surprised at an ordinary, tangible evidence of the power of God. The great majority of the Christian world is still weeping at the foot of the cross. The consciousness of man is fixed on the Christ who died, not the Christ who lives. They are looking back to the Redeemer who was, not the Redeemer who is. It is a sad thing when you hear Christians with a groan in them. When I meet the groaner, I say in my heart, God, move that man on into the place where he comprehends what Christianity is. Men tell us in these days that sin is what you think it is. Well, it is not. Sin is what God thinks it is. You may think according to your own conscience. God thinks according to His. There were days when the church could club men into obedience by preaching hell to them, but that day has long passed. The world has outgrown it. If the church ever succeeds in doing that big thing, that great thing, that unspeakable thing that God purposes that we should do, it can only be when we enter into the divine compassion of the Son of God. Because of the fact that a man by the action of his will, puts himself purposely in contact with God, faith takes possession of his heart, and the condition of his nature is changed. Instead of being fearful, he is full of faith. Instead of being absorbent and drawing everything to himself, his spirit repels sickness and disease. The Spirit of Christ Jesus flows through the whole being, and emanates through the hands, the heart, and from every pore of the body. The purpose of Jesus is not only to save men from their sins, but by the grace of God to begin in the souls of men that marvelous development in the nature and mind and understanding of God our Father, until by the grace of God we are able to take our place and our part in the kingdom of Jesus Christ and bear our share of responsibility. Do not imprison Christ in you. Let him live, let him manifest himself, let him find vent through you. One of the beautiful things about the gospel of Jesus Christ is that it is progressive in its revelation and application. We have run into false theology, we have run into churchianity and human interpretations, and a hundred other follies, but friends, it is a perfectly lovely and refreshing thing to get back to Jesus. The reason for the resurrection is that the kingdom of Christ is not to be in heaven entirely. It is to be in this world. And the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to rule in this world. Consequently, while we live in this world we will need a body like our Lord's, capable of existence here, and capable of existence over there. Christ was a miracle. Every Christian is a miracle. Every answer to prayer is a miracle. Every divine illumination is a miracle. The power of Christianity in the world is a miraculous power. God help us to realize that ours is a high and holy calling. The Spirit of God at work in a man goes thousands of miles beyond psychological influence. In those early centuries of Christianity, Christianity did not go into the world apologizing. It went to slay the powers of darkness and undo the works of the devil, and it lived in holy triumph. There is a baptism that belongs to Jesus. It is in his supreme control. No angel or man can bestow it. It comes from him alone. He it is which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. So the individual who wants the Holy Spirit must come into definite. Conscious contact with Jesus Christ Himself. Lord, take every cursed thing out of my soul that keeps me from believing the Lord Jesus Christ. Take the words of Jesus and let them become the supreme court of the gospel to you. Christ is at once the spotless descent of God into man and the sinless ascent of man into God, and the Holy Spirit is the agent by whom this is accomplished. 
we live that our souls may grow. The development of the soul is the purpose of existence. God Almighty is trying to obtain some decent association for himself.